<laughs> saying um, off air that we're both like dying from hay fever at the mm. moment. It's not nice. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I want to get straight into this. Um, so just give like a background uh, about yourself. So you graduated in 2010 from Bar Spa. What have yeah, you? Ten what, long years ago. I know that's because we met. We met in 2007, didn't we? Yeah, just as just after we started. What well, was the day we started at Freshers? It, it was yeah, which is like <laughs> just ridiculous thinking that was like 13 years mm. ago. Uh, so what have you done since you graduated um, in 2010? Uh, I f- decided that uh, I wanted to combine two things that I enjoyed, which was writing and football. Um, at the time, I thought it was quite an easy industry to break into. Um, you set up your blog, and then you know, six months later, you're one of the head writers for the Times. But found that was easier said than done um, for a while. And talking about three years, I put the free into freelance. Yeah, um, and then was lucky enough to be handed an opportunity by who scored in 2013 and have been there since. Awesome. And like your time during freelance, cause that, was that difficult? Was that hard? Because like you said, you, you expected it to be to like a walk in the park, but clearly from what you said, it wasn't. Yeah, it was hard. Um, you just got to persevere with it really. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it, it took ages just to get my foot in the door and I'm, I mean, I was, I was in fortunate enough position in that uh, my dad allowed me to kind of stay at home and focus on what I could do uh, without paying rent and anything. So I was in a very fortunate position to, to be able to do that and focus on what I could do. But it was a very, very tough industry to eventually break into and is still unbelievably competitive to this day, if not more so. Yeah, no, because I've, cause I've just started working for the BBC and... I knew it was competitive, but I didn't know how competitive it was. Like everyone mm. is just at a level or two above you and you mm. either step up or you get left behind. So yeah, I definitely, definitely agree with you. So you started in 2013 at who scored, uh, what have you, what have you done with them? What are they? Let's, let's start with that. So what, what is who scored.com <laughs> for people who don't know? Uh, we're one of the biggest stats websites in the football industry. Um, we use up the data over, well, over 200, pieces of Opta data to come up with our unique rating system. So we use things like goals, assists, obviously, tackles, interceptions, shots, chances created. All of those are thrown into a big old who scored machine and it throws out a number between one and 10 of your, your who scored rating. Okay, cool. Because you you actually have asked the, the question that's been on everyone's lips for the last maybe 15 years on who is better, Messi or Ronaldo? And who, who's, who does who scored think it is? Messi. Messi. Okay. And why, and why is that? Just, just for, just for, cause I, yeah, cause I, I'm sort of in between the two. So I, I love to hear your views. I mean, a lot of the stats that Messi, uh, that do well in terms of the rating, Messi excels in. So, I mean, things like, uh, goals scoring chances created, successful dribbles, Obviously, the goals and assists metrics matter importantly as well. Whereas Ronaldo has he there in La Liga, he was you know up there with Messi at the time. But as he's kind of developed his game and he's moved from a winger to inside and go for goal, he's more of a central striker. So it's kind of lessened his impact in the final third. It's still still obviously astronomically high, but not as high as it was with Real Madrid. Whereas Messi's just kind of stuck at that yeah. high level and just continues to play at that high level. He's consistently consistent, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you also did, I saw, because I was on your website the other day, you did a stat for Diego Maradona, uh, which, yeah. is inc- which is incredible <laughs> <laughs> that you could do that. Well, all, the, all the, you know, the good folks at Opta, they have all of this data, they send it all across and we, as I said, we just throw it into the who scored machine it throws out a rating and realized that the other day it was 34 years since that game and yeah. uh recalled that we had the stats for it so just took it from there really and looking at the stats from maradona from that game and it was hugely impressive yeah no he's he's because i think and I, I think i speak for you as well like he was just before our generation and just yeah. before like him being massive. So growing up and watching people like Messi and Ronaldo is we're hugely privileged 
massively mm. privileged to watch people like that play football. Uh, so what's your specific role at Who Scored? So what do, what do you do? Uh, I'm the editorial officer, so I have someone who works above me and I report into him, but basically a bit of everything really. Um, write news, write features, focus on the social media side of things, uh, focus on graphics. Um, basically kind of a jack of all trades when it comes to working in the Who Scored industry. Um, okay. Obviously, there's extra elements that you can add to what I could do, but at the moment, they're the kind of core, four core uh, things I do. So, news writing, feature writing, social and graphics. Okay, cool. So, what would a what would a typical day look like for Ben McAleer? Is, is there a typical day at Who Scored? No, <laughs> it's all it's it's all very different, especially with uh, the lack of football between March and kind of last week. It was. Yeah. Basically, I had to put our thinking caps on, get very creative, come up with a lot of different ideas to kind of fill the void, which was a distinct lack of football for three months. But we managed to kind of do that uh, to great effect. And now it's just a case of there's something to do every day that's completely different. Yeah. So what sort of, what sort of stuff are you doing then now? At the moment, um, focus on previous games, focus on upcoming games, previews. Uh, not just for the Premier League, but you've got Serie A, La Liga, Bundesliga finishes this weekend. Um, so we have to edit those from our external preview writers and get those published as quickly as possible. Um, and yeah, produce news, produce uh, graphics, produce features, just to you know drive as many people towards the website as possible. Yeah, because I like because when the football was on, the thing I loved because I follow you on Twitter. And for those who don't, I highly recommend to follow you. It's, it's at Ben McAleer one, isn't it? The number one. Yeah. And what you do is you live tweet from the games. And that just saves people like me who love football just so much time because we can just follow you and we'll know what's happening with the games. And the, and the way you do it is it's so, so quick. So that always, yeah. so I've always wondered like sort of around that. So what's the process before, after and during during that, to say, do you, would you turn up to a game like an hour beforehand? What's, what do you do? Uh, I'll turn up two hours beforehand. Two I hours, okay. To, that's what I got. I, I got told that just I was starting out, kind of aim to get there two hours beforehand, mainly because to avoid any issues with getting to the ground. Um, right. Uh, it's happened before where I've been delayed a bit and got there kind of half an hour before kickoff and been in a mad rush to try, trying to get everything set up and sorted. Um, Importantly, as well, you get there early because you want to get the food, especially at Chelsea and Arsenal. Yes, yeah, I remember you say you said the best food at Stamford Bridge and the Emirates. Oh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's incredible. So, you want to get there early just to get a, a really good meal, get that in. Um, and it's just a case of kind of getting set up, really. Um, you can't just kind of get there and get thrown straight into it because it's such a quick sort of 90 minutes, it goes by in um, the flash of an eye. What, flash of eyes? Is that what is that phrase? Yeah. We 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 can make <laughs> we'll we, we all go, go, go with it. <laughs> we'll go over it. So what do you do uh, during what do you do during half time? Do you just like sit on your bum and do nothing? So what happens no, then? Uh, <laughs> go, go to the toilet. That's important. And yeah. go and get uh they, they obviously do all the half time snacks as well for the media. So it's not just the footballers that have the half time oranges, but uh the football press also have all the different kind of part-time snacks available, which is obviously, you know, you want to keep all the media sweet on, on your side. Yeah. Um, get coffee, kind of relax for five minutes and then get back out again for the second half. Okay, cool. And um, what happens like, because I know you do like an end of game sort of analysis, end of game report. So what goes into that? So is there like specific things that have to go into each article? Uh, not specifically. We can mix up what we can do. So it's, I mean, a lot of the, match reports kind of vary on what you can do so we obviously have the player rating so there's immediate content right there so just kind of expanding on what how a player and a specific rating um one of the popular ones obviously is like the five lessons learned from a match so you pick out specific uh incidents that happen within a game that you could sort of build upon and use as a talking point or just your generic match report but those are a bit as i said they're a bit generic yeah um so I kind of tend to avoid those. I think the main one we go for is the ratings because it's our brand. It's our yeah. bread and butter, really. So we just give that as much promotion as possible. 
All right. Okay. And like, because you mentioned earlier that you had to persevere and you had to work hard in the time that you was freelancing. Is there any other advice you'd give to somebody who's looking to get into the the media side of the football industry? Um, I think perseverance is the biggest one. Okay. That's and that's in my opinion anyway. Obviously, everyone that's kind of in a position of mine or higher um, has different advice to give, regardless uh, depending on their previous experiences. Mine would be just to persevere with what you're doing and a key one would be to find a niche um to work your way in okay because ev- ev- everyone knows about Messi and everyone knows about Ronaldo and everyone knows about all the big name players so if you can find uh a niche in say like league one league two lower leagues or lesser known foreign leagues um that'll give you a good standing to kind of build upon yeah because it wasn't one of your I remember you telling me this years ago. Was it one of your interview questions was how many goals has Messi scored in like a calendar year? And mm. I made that. It was, wasn't it? Like you, yeah. um, and he, cause he <clears throat> scored like a ridiculous, like 92, 93 in like the 2012, was, 2013, 13 season. It was something unbelievable, but I mean, it's, it's one of those that kind of just stuck in the back of your brain. Yeah. You kind of see it and you think, Oh yeah, I know that straight away. And everyone's like, how do you know that? And you think, well, it's just there. It's just common knowledge, supposedly. But yeah, um, so, no, go on. Oh uh, yeah, I was just going to say, it's just like it's just those useless like pieces of information that no one needs to know, <laughs> but, but you yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so that's key. That is. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Those, those, um, little, those little like nuggets of key information are really important sometimes. But to, yeah. to an out, well, especially in the industry, but to an outside world, you're going to be like. <laughs> Why do you know how many goals Messi scored in like 2011? You're like, yeah, <laughs> just do. It's like, uh, like I know that this is gonna sound really weird, but I know that if you put <laughs> your fingers in your ears, the noise that you hear is the blood rushing past your eardrums. In drops. Why do? Yeah, why? Do you <laughs> no, Ben, no one needs to know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm gonna test that straight after this. <laughs> so, what has uh, what's changed for you uh, in terms of? since the lockdown has started uh, so are you like working from home what's what's the difference between pre-lockdown and during lockdown um pre-lockdown uh i mean we, we're working in office um our office is based in hammersmith so it's quite close to me at the moment um so i could just walk to work which is quite nice whereas now okay. it's just based in the um my desk is about 15 foot away <laughs> okay, cool. probably further <laughs> yeah um but yeah it's just the other side of the, my two bed flat so that's nice that's awesome um a, a big a big thing was the whole like child care issue with because obviously we've got one year old yeah um so it was me and partner balancing full-time work with full-time child care which made for 10 weeks of very um stressful mornings afternoons evenings with a one-year-old who was starting to walk and you know, blabber on at you and then get quite frustrated because they can't go outside and socialise with other children. But um, I say the big, the, the main change has been the difference from working in office to working from home all the time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I want to touch on that. How is it? Because I've met Hugo, who's your son, like New Year's Eve? It must have been New Year's Eve, yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So how is it becoming like a first-time father with, with, uh, with the one-year-old? It was hard. <laughs> yeah. It was really hard. Um, he was annoyingly born on Valentine's Day, which is the same day as uh, my dad's birthday, which really annoyed me. <laughs> right. Because uh, I didn't want him to have the same birthday because my dad was just like, go on, go on, just wait. And he was obviously a bit overdue. So he, he waited until my dad's birthday to then yeah. uh, show himself. And I was like, oh, I'm always going to hold that against you now. Um, but it was it was hard at first, but it, it obviously after a couple of months it gets a lot easier because you def- sort of find out their routines as they continue to develop. Um, now he's just kind of a walking, talking machine. Yeah. Um, he doesn't walk through the flat; he barrels through it, like <laughs> arms in the air, full pelt. Obviously, at least a couple of bumps and bruises. Yeah. Um, as he walks into like whatever, because he just puts his head down and goes. Yeah. Um, but no, it is, it's fun now. Um, well, obviously, it's always been fun. It's it more challenging at first. But now he kind of knows what he wants and he can kind of tell you it, um, it's just a lot easier. And uh, he's just a lot of fun. He's got a wicked sense of humour as well. 
So yeah, and, and also I think I don't know if you're allowed to do this, but he's also a Tottenham fan. I mean, that's yep. just that's just that's just not fair. <laughs> no, he, he, he need to be a Tottenham fan or he can live out the street. <laughs> I've already made that clear. <laughs> made that clear. At, <laughs> at the age of like no, <laughs> he has to be a yeah, Spurs fan. <laughs> yeah, he was two days old, and it's like, well, you're a Tottenham fan. Uh, if I have to go through all this, then you have to too. Uh, but luckily, as as we're recording, um, Spurs won yesterday. So um, mm. so yeah, we had this uh, this interview booked for a couple of days, and I was I was very very glad that Tottenham won because I knew you'd be in better, better mood. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 even if Tottenham won, I'm still like I hate my team. <laughs> but that's that's love, love hate, yeah. Mm. But, it's more of a hate hate at the moment. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the I think that's the the draw, and that's the love for the beautiful game. Like even mm. though you hate this team, you still go through thick and thin for them. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I was saying I was saying to um my partner that. Even even on TV, and I was like, oh, it's really annoying. She's like, why? And I, like, oh, I have to watch them. Yeah. Yeah, have to watch Tottenham. I was like, I do. I do, yeah. I have to watch Tottenham. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a Liverpool fan, so I'm like loving life at the moment. It hasn't always been this easy, but um, uh, we are like loving loving life at the moment. So it's it's mm. it's a great time to be a Liverpool fan. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I just wanted to end quickly with three questions on the past, present and future. So what advice would you give a 15 year old Ben McAleer? So what would you say to him? Uh, uh, I was weighing this up and well, no pun intended, but I was going to say just lose some weight. <laughs> Back when I was 15, I was really fat. Like obviously I can't talk now on you know, dad bod mode. Yeah. Um, but when I was like 15, I was like, overweight and unhealthy etc etc so like lose some weight you'll feel better for it and yeah give you you know like drive determination to achieve better bigger and better things but obviously there's the cliched you know focus on your education do a course that you know will benefit you in the future so in this case it'd be focus keep focus on developing a media and sort of creative writing that sort of thing but i think the core one would just be lose some weight <laughs> That's yeah, what I, tell myself anyway. <laughs> I had um, I interviewed one of my other friends, and he said uh, his advice would be put the cake down, just put the cake down. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. So you did? Uh, is it media and comms at Spa when we were together? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah. So I suppose like the advice you'd give yourself, you sort of followed in like a roundabout way. Because mm. you, you did um, follow, yeah. I mean, I did media at school and then media at college and then media and communications at uni as well with um, bizarrely some business studies on the side, which I'm never going to do again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's, it's been quite nice to be able to sort of say I did media, um, studied media and now I kind of work in it as well. Yeah, no, that's, that's a, yeah, an amazing thing to say. So moving on to the present. So you have got a dinner party it's yourself and you can invite any three people you want so it can be dead or alive it can be celebrity non-celebrity athlete or non-athlete whoever you want ben who would you go for which three people would you go for um well recently i was quite behind the curve and recently only recently watched the last dance oh my god how amazing (laughs) it's so good and it's so good i mean i'm not i like i know obviously about the like chicago bulls from you know growing up and everything but I just didn't focus kind of that saying, much on it. I've never, I've, never, I've never been that much into basketball, but watching that, it's just it's amazing. And one of one of the best you know sports documentaries I've seen. Yeah. In, well, ever really. Yeah. Um, so I was it, I was half tempted to say I'd put the three amigos of like Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, Scottie Pippen and yeah. Dennis Rodman just to have <laughs> all three in there. Um, Jordan because it's Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen because his voice is like smooth. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and Dennis Rodman because I just want to hear some of the stories but I figured I'd just mix it up so I'll go for Michael Jordan okay cool MJ um, uh, I've always wanted to meet him so I'll go for David Beckham ah oh, right you've got to go for d exactly and I mean obviously him and Michael Jordan that'd be quite fun to watch because you know Beckham took Jordan's 23 at Real Madrid of course yeah and Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Nice, sec. You're Just, like the <laughs> second person, I think second or third person to say him. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He'd be so much yeah. fun. Just to be yeah. 
to chat to and <laughs> see what he does. Plus, I just want to see him like bench press me. <laughs> Because I mean, I reckon he could do quite considerably. He probably put Beckham on top, and then maybe yeah. even MJ, and then he'd be able to do it quite easily. Yeah, exactly. So we've got uh, Michael Jordan, we've got David Beckham, and we've got Dwayne the Rock Johnson and Ben yeah. McAleer. The, the final, the, <laughs> the key final piece. <laughs> the key final piece. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just a question on uh, the last one we'll do is a question on the future. So where do you think? Ben, Mac- ben McAleer will be doing in 2030. So what do you think you'll be doing in 10 years' time? What's your hopes? Uh, I mean, just kind of keep progressing through the football writing world. I mean, I'm still... I've, I've been working for Who Scored for seven years now, so I've been there for a good long while. But obviously, to kind of keep progressing and keep building up that experience and the portfolio... Um, but I don't know, it's hard to see what the future holds. I mean, on New Year's Eve, we couldn't have thought they would be in lockdown three months later. Yeah. Also, Hugo be, what, 11? Which is, like, crazy to think. Yeah, that's mental. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. So he, he'll probably have a sibling or two, but just don't tell my girlfriend that because she's keen to have another one already. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep that in the bud straight Yeah, <laughs> we'll keep it between <laughs> us. It's not like we're recording anything, it's fine. No, 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 she can't see this, so it's fine. <laughs> I can't think of a of a perfect way to end. Thank you, Benji. No worries. Thanks, Bob.